Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Another episode of Trash Talk. I'm TJ O'Connor. With me, as always, Damian the Wolverine Hill. And Trash Talk is being joined tonight by undefeated professional boxer. Jimmy the Bull Barnes coming off of a successful pro debut last weekend at Hinkley, Minnesota. Trash Talk is brought to you as always by our sponsors, Bahala Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo, Origin Wellness CBD, Spartan Martial Arts, James Clark Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Striking Institute, The Fighters, and my mom. Jimmy, thanks for taking the time to join us. How you doing tonight, friend? Doing all right, guys. Thanks for having me on again. It's always a pleasure being with you guys. And thanks for the awesome hookup this weekend, Damien. Love it. (laughs) Well, thank you for the awesome performance, man. I mean, I think you went out and shot quite a few people, actually. I don't think too many people were expecting you to win and also form the way you did. And not trying to sound like a dick, but I honestly, I was thinking of his striking experience and I'm just like, oh crap, they're trying to get a good win for themselves. But you put a halt to all of those, yeah. those uh, doubters and all of those, uh, the expectations of him beating you up. Man, how are you feeling about your performance? Because like I said, I, I definitely believe you shocked the boxing community. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'd say so. I definitely buy the, the people that came out to me afterwards was, it was pretty insane, but, uh, you know, I just, I, I know how much work I put into it, you know, and, and, and it's some people, you know, I mean, I, I pick up things quicker than some people, but I mean, I, after that one fight that I had at LFA, I was not ever letting that happen again. Yeah. You know, I, I had to make sure. So, I mean, day in, day out, I was constantly, constantly working on it. So I, I, I knew what was going to happen. You know, I, I knew what I was capable of. I knew, I knew this. I, I called this. You know, I, I said that I was going to win in stunning fashion, and oh. and I'm going to continue to do that from here on out. I love oh, it. Man. I love the confidence. Um, it definitely came across, and the performance did show. There was no hesitation in the fight at all. You mentioned, you know, you've been working on it, switching it up since that LFA fight. Uh, just shout out, who have you been working with as far as boxing coaches? Because, like I said, in that short amount of time, we're talking less than a year. I'm, it, it's night and day. I mean, it, your hands are getting a lot more crisp. Who deserves the credit for that? Um, you know, actually, there's a lot of people. Um, th- there's one guy that stuck with me through this whole thing, and that's been Mark Goad. Um, yeah. he, he's been there from the beginning, you know, constantly, you know, a guy that's been on me about my hands and telling me that I'm better than what I actually, you know, I think I am, you know. So, I mean, <laughs> he's been there constantly. Uh, Angel Pacheco is another one that's a part of my team that's a big part of my boxing team here and obviously my MMA team. Um, I have also been working out with, uh, Colton Warner and Jeff Warner down at uh, Minnesota top team. So, I mean, Colton's been a good friend of mine for years. Um, so I mean, me and him are pretty, uh, we work out a couple days a week, so that also helps also. So, but yeah, so many people, Chaz Haggs helped me out of, uh, you know, St. Call Golden Gloves. There's just been so many people that have, you know, had their hands in on, you know, on my hands, basically it's the best way to put it. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I actually had the chance to speak with Mark actually quite a few times. Um, <laughs> we seem to bump into each other at, at every fight and end up talking for almost an hour yep. every single time. You know? but, yep. uh, one, of, one of the things that he was telling me about uh, your previous fight is that he was saying that you need to start believing in your hands. And we were talking, you weren't around when, when we had this conversation. And then after this last fight, he was saying, like, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? And he's telling me, like, right to my face. And I'm like yeah dude you were right like he just he does need to let it go and uh he was saying like he just, just believed that he's, he just needs to believe and that's what you were saying earlier how much do you leave now on showbox mind you <laughs> sorry repeat that you kind of cut out oh sorry i'm i'm i think my my connection is bad i'm on a little bit of a delay but when me and Mark were talking about your fight or your previous fights, he's like saying that you need to, he just needs to believe in his hands. He's so much better with his hands. And then after your last fight, he comes up to me. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Now, how much do you believe now in your hands after a performance like that? Uh, you know, I, 
it was, it's really weird. Like my last fight, you know, I knew I progressed with my hand uh, in the fight with Mahmoud, but I, I was, for some reason, I was very hesitant about letting him go. Um, as you guys seen, yeah. I was pretty one dimensional, you know, <laughs> which, which ended up losing me the fight. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm very confident in my hands now. I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't have things to work on because I do. I'm, I, 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 there's always room to grow. And I, and there's a lot of people that now, especially after that win that are, that are jumping at the chance to uh, work with me and, and to help me get better. So yeah, it, it's going to be amazing to see where my career goes. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see for sure. And looking at it here, especially being at where you're at right now. And I know you're a guy who just truly likes to fight. You want to stay active. Um, are, are you looking to compete in boxing again soon or is, is an MMA next? What's next for Jimmy Barnes? Um, you know, honestly, I don't know, especially with this whole, you know, this whole coronavirus stuff going mm -hmm. on. You don't know what's what's going to happen. Obviously, it's going to put me out training for a couple weeks. I had something I was probably going to do in April, but I, I doubt that that's going to happen. I mean, honestly, with all this coronavirus stuff. But but honestly, I was told by a couple people that I should probably, if I could focus on boxing right now, I probably would be, wouldn't be a, the most horrible thing. Um. And, and, you know, and I, and I agree with them, you know, it's just, it's only going to help me to be a more well-rounded fighter when I, if I, when I return to MMA next year, wherever I do, it's just going to make me very, that much more dangerous. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, I definitely agree. And one of the things that, I mean, a lot of people have talked about it, uh, which is the best striking to have one nowadays, I think most people believe that you need to still learn all of it you know but i it's the it's a universal truth it's something that i actually do believe but nobody puts the hands together as good as boxers it's the only thing that they do and they're so damn good at it <laughs> you know yeah. so it's it, it's one of those things that i'm like if you want to get your hands right learn how to box and it does translate into mma and right. how do you or actually you know what i'm getting off topic from the fight right now um the crowd how much time did you know before the fight, actually? Because you spoke, you said something about the coronavirus, and that's why it's in my head. But you, you, I mean, there was no media, no fans were allowed for the people that don't know. Uh, only cornermans and like immediate family of the fighters, and uh, people were being escorted out as soon as they were their family member was done fighting, and it was it's kind of weird. But with all of the health, I I get it, I guess you know, but uh. How weird was that for you? And how much time did you know beforehand that there wasn't going to be any fans allowed? Um, for the fan thing, we actually knew the day before. Uh, we knew, like, well, I, I mean, okay. right after we end. So, I mean, really, we had less than 24-hour notice. Um, but, I mean, that was, you know, that was nobody's fault. You know, that's that's just everyone acting, you know, and yeah. trying to be the fighters, which, which I understand. You know, it, it sucks for my fans and stuff because I sold out all my tickets, you know. So, I mean, but, you know, that's, yeah. that's just, when, when they come back, we're going to get them comp seats and, you know, get them into, you know, my next fight and take care of them real well. So, but I mean, as far as the, the epidemic, no. this whole thing is just crazy. Yeah, that, that's great to hear that the promotion is willing to compensate your fans, especially under this untimely action that had that had to be taken. And like I said, in this time, we have to understand it. So, I mean, fan impact aside, just as far as the experience I guess you don't have a you don't have any other pro boxing matches to compare it against. But what was it like fighting in in almost an empty arena? <laughs> um, oh, so I want to make sure too that that's going to be me paying my fans back. I, I no way that my the promotion said they're going to pay for it. That's going to oh. be me taking care of my fans. But uh, yeah. you know, as far as the, the fighting in well, this dude, atmosphere, that, I find it to be that's harder. respectful. Uh, you know, I find I actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Too. What was that? I found this was way harder to fight in this atmosphere than it was a crap load of people, honestly. Because yeah. because with this, you know, with this, with these people, yeah. you know, you have <laughs> all around you that knows what they're doing <laughs> you know? and, and are very picky about what they're seeing. So it's yeah. just like, okay, you know, they're depicting every little thing. So, you know, you're just thinking in your head, you just got to get out of it. But, you know, in the end, I knew what I, I had to prove and what I what I wanted to prove. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely think you, you went out, you proved – it, it doubters wrong um and there was one thing that i was really impressed with in the fight too is that the answering back on punches you know like it, every time he caught like your elbow or your arm it's like you have it oh he touched me and you're coming right back it's like hit 
and you're hitting him back because obviously one of the things that it, it's so fucking it's so weird that most people haven't picked up on this yet in MMA, but if they're touching you with their hand, their hand is not blocking a punch. Follow nope. it back immediately. And nope. that's one of the things that you were doing. Is that something that you were working on leading up to this fight specifically for Daniel? Or were, is that just something that you guys work on anyway? Oh, uh, that's, that's been a big muscle memory thing for me. You know, that's, you know, it, obviously bringing my hands back to my face. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's been, it, that's a hard thing to do. Especially when you come in here, just this yeah. big old player, you know, who doesn't know anything about boxing. You know, I, you know, it, it it's it's something you got to learn, and, and and it took me, you know, I, I did mostly like most of the time, honestly, like I did a, probably a thousand punches a night that I would make sure I'd come right straight back to my face every time, and it just became reactionary, and then in sparring, you just kind of start getting used to blocking, and it's what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. that's that's great yeah, to see I the just, repetition come into movement and allow yourself to grow as a fighter. Uh, like Damian said, it was a great performance. You fired back. You, you hurt him in the first round. We're able to put him away in the second round. Uh, as far as teammates, sponsors, anything like that, who, who do you have to thank for leading up to this fight and putting in that work with you? Um, you know, like I said earlier, Mark Goat has put in countless amount of time, and he hasn't asked anything in return. Um, just, just to be there, you know, and I mean, he's, he's been there for the whole time. Um, Angel Pacheco, Colton and Jeff Warner, um, obviously a huge thanks to, uh, Corey Rapaxson and his promotion. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, you know, there's a couple fights that I'd like to see myself in, in the next couple. Um, I don't, I'm not big at calling people out, but I mean, I wouldn't mind fighting a couple of guys that I, I've seen fight that night. So, um, We'll get back to that one. Um, I got all my sponsors. Uh, w. Yeah. Uh, East Kepanic uh, and Company, uh, Quebec Law, Pine City Family Chiropractic, Laura Cates, Healing Touch Massage, Kappa Tattoo, Mashaqua Community Center. They've been awesome at housing and facility for me. You know, I had to train. Um, Burt's Auto Body, Kenny Bic Auto Sales, uh, Line Hack, Athletic Advantage. Um, yeah, it's all the people that have contributed. You know, my dad, my family, obviously. Man. Dude, that that's great, and this is a long list of sponsors, dude. I'm fucking happy for you, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I dude, can't wait for whether it's MMA or boxing, dude. I'm gonna be there. It's gonna be exciting. I I, I honestly think it'll be more. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. And I appreciate you for being on. Hold on, I'm sorry. It keeps. I, my connection is like really bad, you guys. I'm really sorry about this. Hopefully, I'm not cutting out too much. But I I didn't no, hear that last part that you said. No, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, it'll probably be the more boxing side of it for a little while, um, just till things kind of, you know. Okay. Obviously, I, I have a statement to make, and I, and I think I'm going to make it a couple times before we go, uh, before we go back to MMA. We'll see. Oh, we'll see dude. Play it out. Dude, hell yeah. I've, I fucking love it, man. I can't wait uh, to see your boxing match then. Shit. <laughs> and people wa uh, watching this video, like this video, subscribe to Trash Talk with Damien and TJ. Do not be a hoe. <laughs> TJ.